So just to remind you, here's our data structure. Right now, we're just considering an array. We have some objects that we want to put into our data structure, x. As a reminder, we call the hash code function for x. That gives us an integer. When we um, get that integer back, we mod it on the table size. Sorry, we make it positive. Then we take that and we mod it on the table size. And now we know that we have a number h for our entry x that's between the size of our table. We take that number and we put x into the appropriate cell based on what its hash code is. What happens, what do we do when we've got another element y and we go through the same approach? So we take our hash value, hash code, we take our hash value and we make it positive, we take our hash value and we mod it on the table size. What happens when that points to exactly the same location? And so now we want to put y where we've already got x. That's called a collision. So there's several ways that we could approach that problem. So one of the ways that we could do that is we could say, well, this space is full, so let's just go to the next space and put y in the next space. That's okay, but then when we come back to later on to get our data, we need to know, okay, we've, we want to know where our data is. We go to this location, there's something there, but it's not the thing that we're looking for. We need to check the next space, and we maybe need to check the next space and the next space and the next space to make sure that we don't miss our element that we've added. So this approach is called linear probing, because what we're doing is we're probing in our data structure for an empty, an empty space. So as our data structure starts filling up, as our data structure starts filling up, we have to look in more and more spaces to be sure that we don't miss our object that we add. Similarly, if we want to remove an element, so for example, we want to remove this middle one here, we can't just delete the element and set this space to null. Because now when we come along and look for something, we'll start at the beginning, and as we're going through, if we get to a null, we say, okay, well, we didn't find what we're looking for. But in fact, maybe what we're looking for is down here. So instead of just deleting something and acting like it's not there, you have to set a flag and say, this thing was in our data structure, there was something in this space, but now this space is empty, we're going to ignore that thing, but if I come back and look for another element, I'll know that I can skip over it and keep going through until I get to a real null. So linear probing is trivial, because we just start with our hash value and we increment it and we increment it when we're adding until we get to a null and then we put the thing there. But it's more complex when we're trying to remove something or when we're trying to check that something's there because we have to account for the fact that it may be um, further down in our data structure. So the first approach is linear probing. That's okay, but Actually, what tends to happen with linear probing is you get clumps of um, related data, or unrelated data, but data tends to clump together. And it quickly becomes very inefficient because you'll end up just adding things um, sequentially through the array. And so to overcome the problems with linear probing, 
we tried quadratic probing. And so the way that quadratic probing goes is that you start with your hash value. The first element you put into that space. And then if you come back with the hash value for another element and the space in the array is filled, so here's our array. If we're coming back and we're trying to add something to a position that's filled, instead of adding one, which we do with linear probing, for quadratic probing, what we do is we add a quadratic. So the first time, we'll do hash value plus, uh, let's say, one squared, and then plus two squared, and then plus three squared, and then plus four squared. If we're having a quadratic probing that's using squares. And the idea here is that we're not going to be adding the, the first one, one squared, we'll add to the immediately adjacent spot, but then we're going to try and jump away and add something further away um, in our data structure. Of course, in both linear probing and quadratic probing, we need to be cognizant that as we're increasing the result of our hash value, it may extend beyond the end of our table size. And so if that happens, we need to mod back over and make sure that we're within the range of our table size. So linear probing and quadratic probing are two approaches to resolving collisions, where we, all we're doing is just incrementing um, very simply, very trivially, we're in incrementing the result of the hash value. There's another approach called double hashing. And in double hashing, the way that it works is we have not one hash code function for our object, but two different ones. So we're going to have two hash code functions. And the key is that the second function, it must be different from the first. And it must not return zero, okay? So then basically all we do is we take our data, let's take data D, we call hash code. We get our value, we make it positive, we mod it on the table size, we go to the cell, we add our data. The next piece of data we call hash code, we get our value, we make it positive, we mod it on the table size. If we go to the cell and the cell's full, then we call our second hash code function. Let's call it e.hash2. We call our second hash code function. That gives us a new integer. We add together the numbers from our two hash codes. That's why we must not return zero. Um, and we use the result of that addition to identify the location in the table where our element has to go. So double hashing is convenient because we can provide a different hash function from, let's say, linear or quadrating that would allow us to spread the data out across the table. But the problem with double hashing is that you have to then ensure that your data whatever data is that's going into your data structure, has two different hash functions. We need our standard hash function that we call to get the initial code, and then we need our second hash function that we're going to call if the table's full, at, or if the table is occupied at that position. And Java has no way of ensuring that there's a second hash function in the data object. It has a way of ensuring the hash code is there, and that's because, as you remember, 
Every object is an object, and every object has a hash code function. So double hashing is an alternative to linear and quadratic probing, but both of those have problems in that the table becomes full quite quickly. With both um, linear and quadratic probing, you need to, as the, the load factor lambda increases, you need to consider resizing the table um, once the load factor gets to about 0.6.